Hey guys, thanks for joining me today. My name is Mark. This is Spagaver Backpacking. And today, we're gonna to be taking a look at the stoves that I talked about yesterday. So I just did a video comparing or talking about the four most popular backpacking stoves out there. And during that video, I mentioned that I carry this one right now. This is the one that I kind of recommend to most people. This is the Soto Amicus. But that this is my favorite stove favorite canister stove anyway, and this is the Soto Windmaster. Even though the size difference you can see here, this is actually lighter than the Amicus. So if this is my favorite, why have I been carrying the Amicus? And the reason is the igniter. The igniter on my Windmaster, uh, sometimes it works, but 99% of the time it doesn't anymore. Something happened internally, so you can see it doesn't make a click anymore. If you look at the, or you listen to the amicus, you got that click. That's the way that it should be. But this one no longer has a click. It just kind of pushes in, doesn't really grab anymore, and so it's not creating a spark. But the great thing about these Soto stoves is that they are repairable. And so I have purchased the repair kit and so this is the igniter repair kit for the Soto Windmaster. They've got a repair kit for their other stoves as well, but what I need is the Windmaster. So we're gonna open this up, take a look at the parts that are in there, and then take this apart, show you guys how it all goes together. So let's do this, let's go. All right, so to do this repair, all you're gonna need is the kit and a small screwdriver. It's got a very comprehensive set of instructions, and so we're gonna follow that. And what comes in the kit is a new cover, a new igniter, two small Phillips head screws, and one slightly larger Phillips head screw. And those are all the pieces that we're gonna to need to do this. So let's take a look at the instructions and get started. So it says first, screw A, take that one out. And screw A is this top one, which is the larger of them. Okay, so I actually needed to get a little bit bigger screwdriver. I got one because I had looked at these smaller ones, but this needed a little bit bigger one. So we'll pull that one out. Okay, so we're gonna set the old stuff over to the side. And now the two pieces of this, actually let's take this off. Two pieces of the stove should come apart. Okay, so I took screw A out, but it is really tight. The top and bottom pieces are supposed to come apart. I finally got it. Uh, it did take quite a bit of messing with it, and there is like some residue there. I think because this has been in a pot, I mean, quite a few times I've just kind of thrown it into my pot. When the pot is wet, I think there's just a little bit of corrosion from the dissimilar metals being attacked against each other. So before I put it back together, I'm gonna to make sure that I clean that up and get all the gunk out of there so that when it goes back together, it goes back together cleanly. But next step in this process is to unleash, unle <laughs> release the catch. So it is right here is the catch. So we'll use our little screwdriver. So it's right back here on the back. So you've got this cover and here's your igniter. On the back side, there is a little tiny catch that uh, is what we need to pull down. So let me get that pulled down. All right, now that I got that down, it says screw B, which is this one right here. So we're gonna take that one off. Maybe. The problem that I'm dealing with is that this is not a new um, new stove. I've had this one for years. It has been out in the elements. It's been in a pot. And uh, it's really, everything is really stuck together. So I'm gonna need to go get a pair of pliers to get a grip on there to try and get that off because this little screwdriver, even though it fit really well, just completely 
stripped out those threads. So I'm gonna go down to my workbench, get that out, and I'll come back and show you guys. All right, so with a set of needle nose. So got the needle nose in there, got it pulled out, and then while I had it apart and I was down there, I grabbed a little piece of uh, sandpaper and sanded away the corrosion that was inside. So now we've got that off. Now we can pull this off. Okay, so this comes off and you can see it has like a piece right here, where, right next to where the screw goes in that aligns in there. And right next to it is where the, the line itself goes in. So this is the old one. This is the new one. Okay, and so what you've got to do is now bend this one so that it matches what this one looks like. So you kind of align them so that they both are lined up the same. And now you can do the bend. It says to do another little bend like this. So you've got almost like a big C there. Um, and that's so that you can get it all the way in. So then you take that and you run it through that hole, that slot that was there. And that's why you needed it bent was so that you can get it through that hole while it's like this. Maybe I need that a little smaller. Okay. Oh, right, there we go. Through there, and then you can start feeding it the rest of the way through. So now you can see I fed it through and it's just now starting to come out of the top. So I can grab it from the top and actually pull that. So this is kind of the orientation it was in. You can see here, this was on here like this. So we'll take this new one. It's actually like exactly the opposite. Okay, so there's actually a little slot on the back that this little, there's a pin that goes in. And then take the piece that goes on there, the cover, get it lined up, get the little tab through the hole that you had bent up or bent back down. And then now that it's through, go ahead and bend it up, push it in place. Now you need to put a screw in. It actually comes with an extra screw, probably because they're so small, you don't want to lose it. Okay, so now I've got that on there and I've got the wire sticking up here. So now you can take this piece and you've got this red tube that's on there and you wanna make sure that the new piece, the new tube goes inside of it. The new wire goes inside of that red tube. Then you can slide it back down until the hole lines up on here so you can put the bigger screw in. You may need just a little bit more. You need to go in just slightly. Oh, there. Okay, so you can put that screw in and then tighten this one up now. And with that, it is all back together and there should be a click. And if you watch in here, you should be able to see a spark. Definitely a spark. Let's put it on a canister. Just make sure it works the way that it's supposed to. So I've got a canister, not very full, pretty empty. Make sure that we've got the valve closed. Don't need a pot stand on there. We're not doing anything that we're gonna need that. And what I really like about the Amicus stoves, you heard how little gas escaped and you can see just how well this seals around there and it has a nice o-ring inside 
and it creates a great seal. Both going on and coming off, it lets out minimal, minimal gas. Whereas some of my other stoves let out quite a bit. Actually, the MSR Pocket Rocket Deluxe lets out way more than any of my other stoves. So, okay, let's open this up. There's a little bit of gas coming out. Oh, one click. We're back to we're back to this thing working with one click, which is what it has always done and what it is known for is being super super reliable. Now, it went out, but this is a repairable piece. Yeah, it was kind of a pain in the butt because I've used this one quite a bit. It had some gunk. Uh, I did need to get some needle nose pliers in order to get this smaller screw off, but we're back to having a stove that works. And just like that, $15 for a new igniter, and I've brought this stove back to life, and this will probably now become the one that's in my pack going forward. So, uh, hope you guys enjoyed this. If you have any questions, any comments, leave them down below. Uh, simple thing that you can do at home, as long as you've got some screwdrivers. Should only take one like medium-sized screwdriver that fits into both of the screws in order to do it. You may need some pliers, you may need a little bit of sandpaper to clean things up like I did. Uh, but once you get there, you're back to a fully operational stove. Appreciate you guys checking this out. Leave any questions, any comments you've got down below, and I will see you down the trail.